Welcome to this edition of MI Technical Training on the Citroen's FMT020. Everyone can read the display under all light conditions with the new local user interface. It offers best visibility and readability by its large display, full graphics and backlight. Based on your applications, you can choose a top view that suits your needs. Thanks to its depth, all 14 digits of the totalizers are fully viewable on the product. This resolves an old pain point. The display can be operated via four capacitive buttons, which remain protected at all times under the high-impact enclosure. You can operate the product without having to open the enclosure, and you no longer have to worry about humidity, dust or rain getting in your electronics. We know that all applications are different, some of them mounted horizontally, some others vertically. To make it easy to read from all angles, you can mount the local user interface in four orientations. No more breaking your neck to read your numbers. Finally, the text is presented in natural languages, one of 14 options. No more second-guessing icons. That was a great overview. In the rest of the session, we will present in more details the local user interface and the numerous powerful possibilities. We have seven focus points for this session. From the first startup to the data logger via setup and diagnostics. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's have a quick view on the local user interface when you first power up the product. The first thing to know is that you can enter the menu by pressing the right key. Depending on which parameters you need to set, you will need to set the right pin code. By default, the menu is read only to avoid unintentional parameter changes and this will be the default state after 10 minutes of inactivity. Then you will certainly wish to set your language. You can already pick from 14 languages. Finally, you will want to set your system parameter under the setup menu. The FMT020 offers numerous quick start wizards, which will accompany you through the required steps to configure your system, making an easy task of the commissioning. Let's start with the wizards of the sensor settings. The FMT020 has numerous parameters for all of its features. The team designed many wizards to make commissioning simple and easy. This sensor settings wizard is composed of 13 steps, covering all aspects of the sensor parameters. It starts with defining the flow direction, for which the product will report positive flow values. Please note the sticker on the terminal box which indicates a normal positive flow. Next, you will set the frequency of the power source. You have the choice of 50 Hz or 60 Hz, and it is important for the performance of the magnetic circuit to pick the correct one. Then you have the opportunity to control the empty pipe detection algorithm. If you enable it, we recommend that you perform the adjustment step to have a reliable behavior based on your environment. The empty pipe detection algorithm is the object of a short webinar where you can find all the details. At this moment, we stay with a high-level description. When magnetic and conductive media is present in the pipe, between the electrodes, the impedance value measured is relatively low. The opposite is true, when the level is low, below the level of the electrodes, the impedance increases. This behavior is what allows the new algorithm to detect a situation that we call the empty pipe detection. Running the automatic adjustment makes it very tightly coupled to the environmental conditions and ensures a good performance. On a new installation, it is recommended to run this wizard at least once to fine-tune the threshold to the specifics of this installation. The FMT020 offers a new feature in the measurement of the electrical conductivity. It is enabled by default. You can optimize its performance by entering the conductivity of the medium if you know it. With conductivity as a new process value, you can monitor the mixture of the material in your pipe based on its conductivity property. The last step of the sensor settings wizard is to control the insulation measurement. If you choose to enable it, we recommend that you perform the in-situ adjustment for better performance. This value is measured at a regular interval of your choice. 
During the measurement, the H-bridge is driven with a signal, and the product expect no signals on the measurement electrodes. If a flow would be detected, it means that there is an insulation fault in the electrical circuit. An averaging over 512 measurement is required, which takes approximately 45 seconds to complete. Let's move on to the next wizard for inputs and outputs. It is worth noting that all these quick starts have a similar workflow, illustrated here. The same sequence of parameters will be navigated. Let's take a few seconds for you to read the steps and become familiar with the sequence. Press pause if you want more time to read this workflow. For the classic current loop output, you start by choosing if active operation mode is supported. This depends on your wiring. Then you select the process value of interest, amongst three possibilities, volume flow, flow velocity, and our new electrical conductivity. You can also impose a constraint on the output based on your application. For example, you may elect to have zero output when the flow is calculated negative. You can pick one of four modes. You can also apply a damping filter at the output by setting the time constant of the damping filter. This is a simple first order low pass, which means that the time constant represent the time it takes for the output to reach 63% of a step change. Next, you must set the limits of your milliamp output. You can pick between multiple modes, which have different failsafe values and range values. It is up to you to select the ones that will match your process controls. It is also at this stage that you configure the range values based on your process. The last step of configuration of the milliamp output is the failsafe behavior and its value. Now your milliamp output is configured and ready to go. We will skip over the details of the digital output as a frequency output, so that we can focus a bit more on the pulse output mode. When the digital output is set to the pulse output mode, the digital output supplies a number of pulses equivalent to an accumulated volume. The wizard starts by setting the desired direction of flow. Then the wizard takes you through setting the desired polarity and the detailed controls of the pulses such as the width. Next you select the meaning of the pulses in terms of units and the volume. The last step is to select the desired behavior of the pulse output in situation when the flow measurement is not available. You have four options from using the last good value to stop counting or use a failsafe value. When the digital output is configured to relay the status of the system, the wizard will guide you through a few steps from defining the mode of the status signals. You can choose between Namur mode or PCS7 mode. Then you can define the alarms and diagnostics. They are organized in logical clusters, covering the parts of the products, the sensor, the volume flow, the totalizers and the data logging. The FMT020 offers a very complete list of possible alarms, as you can see here. The last configuration step when using the status mode of the digital output is to define the polarity of the output and its duration in case of trigger. This covers the inputs and outputs portion of the wizards. Let's have a brief look at the self-test wizard. Self-verification is a powerful tool that will allow our customers to maintain complete confidence in the performance of the installation. It is part of the three-layer strategy, a foundation of the IQGuard concept. The first layer of verification is the 100 plus parameters that are continuously being checked in the background. The second layer is this self-test, which you may chose to trigger at your convenience. 
The Citroen's FMT020 offers a very large selection of internal verification and self-tests. It is not meant to replace the external verification that is offered by the Citroen's verificator but rather complement it. The external verification is the third layer. In the self-test quick start wizard, you select which tests you want to perform, and in two clicks you get the report directly on the local user interface. For more information about the system, and for a more user-friendly presentation, we encourage you to perform the self-test via the web server or PDM. Using those interfaces, you will receive a verification report in the form of a PDF document. In addition to the self-test quick start wizard, you can select further tests in the maintenance and diagnostics menu. You may select which tests you want to perform, and in two clicks you get the report directly on the local user interface. In this example, you can test the pixels of the display by alternating all pixels on and off. You can also check the system noise levels. The last wizard for this webinar is the data logger. In order to save your log file, the FMT020 needs the microSD card to be installed. If you intend on using the data logger, don't forget to purchase the SD card as an option. We provide an option for an industrial micro SD card to fulfill the harsh testing conditions. But if your environment is more friendly, you can use any commercial micro SD card on the market, as long as the capacity is 32 GB or less. Be aware of a shortcoming in the handling of the clock. The FMT020 is not equipped with a real-time clock. Therefore, in case of power outage, the log file will remain in the right sequence, but the timestamp will have to be set again. This is being improved at the platform level. Let's review the main settings of the data logger engine. As you can see, you can select when you wish to be informed that the SD card is getting full, in order to receive a signal that you have to retrieve the data. In creating the log file, you can separate the desired values by either a comma or a point. Each log values can be selected individually. You can also choose to log individual Modbus registers by specifying their addresses. You can log up to 70 parameters this way. The mapping table can be found in the latest version of the operating instructions. As you can see, even though this product offers a very large number of individual parameters to control all its features, the wizards make it a simple operation, and you can trust your system to perform as expected. Next, let's look at what the product can do when things don't go as planned. You have the possibility to navigate the local user interface and retrieve many characteristics of the system. This is really at the expert level. We will not read every possibility at this moment, but as you can see on this table, you can learn about all the intimate details of your sensor circuitry. You can also review the noise level characteristics to understand if there would be any kind of external interference that could impact your system and affect the measurements. When observing the characteristics of the noise, you can really troubleshoot the installation. It will help an experienced user detect grounding issues or other problems with the coils. On the blue image, you can see typical values of a real sensor. Thanks for joining us. We hope you found the information useful. Don't hesitate to contact your trusted and competent colleagues of the technical support and customer service teams for more information. Keep well.